Hi, thank you for taking time to join us today for this uh, webinar about the claims litigation process uh, within document um, automation. Um, today our presenter will be Mark Settle, and he's the Director of Technical Services at Hot Docs. And uh, Mark has been involved with the document automation field for more than 18 years, and he's supported uh, hundreds of clients worldwide in insurance, banking, legal, government, corporate industries, including several of the largest U.S. insurance providers. So Mark, I'll go ahead and uh, turn the time over to you. And uh, at the end, we'll answer questions. So if you want to type those into your GoToWebinar panel, uh, we can address those at the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Marvin. Uh, so Marvin will be monitoring those questions, and at the end, we will have a Q&A. Uh, we appreciate your time today, and, and we're going to walk through uh, a little bit about hot docs and then how hot docs can help claims litigation and show a case study and a demonstration today. So first, let's talk about uh, you know, why hot docs. Uh, hot docs, we're the market leader in what we do. In fact, we, uh, we created the document assembly field uh, more than 25 years ago uh, with software, uh, a predecessor to hot docs, and then the hot docs product now has been around for about, about 25 years. Uh, and so we have over a million users worldwide and more than 9,000 customers. We're the pioneer uh, and global market leader, like I said, with over 20 years of experience. And we are currently deployed in over 60 countries across the world. Uh, and then we have a large network of uh, global partners, uh, well over 50 partners. And our primary offices uh, are both in the United States and the United Kingdom. And then, uh, you know, it's a proven technology. Uh, obviously, with more than 20 years of experience, uh, Hot Docs started in the legal sector, but uh, we do a lot of work in banking and insurance. In fact, as you can see, uh, we have four of the top five global banks and eight of the top 15 U.S. insurance companies that use Hot Docs. Uh, and we continue to receive awards, uh, such as a couple years ago, the Cool Vendor Award from Gartner, and we're a certified uh, Microsoft partner as well. So the business challenge, why do you need document assembly? When you're creating documents within your business, especially within insurance, uh, either with your claims litigation or your policy documentation or other types of documents, uh, there are various concerns that you might have uh, in building your documents. Uh, the first is compliance and risk. This obviously is a, is a very big one and concerning to a business. Uh, it can mean a lot of cost and, and a lot of challenges uh, if you're not being compliant uh, with the standards that need to be met either by uh, the specific industry or even within your business. So you need to make sure that your documents are accurate, uh, they're maintainable and, and, and comprehensive. Second is standardization. So across your business you might want some very specific standardization so that uh, you have a, a consistent business uh, look and feel to your documents uh, that go out to your business or to your clients. Uh, so you might want to do things like brand your documents specifically have some specific usage with fonts or styles and cross-references or table of contents and even headers and footers within your documents. And then lastly, you want to be efficient, right? So you want to create your documents in the most efficient way, not only uh, you know, making sure that you're eliminating risk uh, and being uh, compliant, but also that you can do it in the fastest way possible because that's going to save time and money to the business. And so those are the, really the three big challenges that you meet in your document creation process and Hot Docs is built to be able to meet those challenges. So let's talk first a little bit about how Hot Docs works. Uh, Hot Docs has two sides to it. There's the idea of creating content, and that is done by a power user. So not all of your end users, but uh, one or two or multiple power users who create that content. And then that content will be consumed by the end users. So first, with content creation, you take the documents that you use within your business, so Word documents or PDF files, and you use HotDocs software to turn them into a HotDocs document template. That content creation process is done uh, on, a, on a Windows desktop machine uh, with HotDocs software in tandem with the word processor. Those templates can then be deployed, and they can be deployed to either a cloud environment, a server environment, or uh, a local desktop environment. And the user is going to use those templates. Those templates can drive an interview process. So that is a dynamic questionnaire that the user will complete to answer data points that are needed for that document. Also, data could come from a system. 
into that interview process uh, to pre-fill some of the data so that the user only needs to fill out the necessary additional data for a document. After that interview is completed, that leads to one or more output documents and also the answers that are entered into that interview process can be saved and reused at a later point. Alternately as well, if all of the data you need can come from another system to generate the documents, you don't even have to use the, the interview. So all of the benefit of building logic and fields into your templates in HotDocs uh, can be used to have templates that just drive a back-end document creation process. Uh, and so that's very common as well where businesses are using systems that have all of the data they need to generate specific documents. So hot docs and insurance. Uh, if you're working you know, out of the insurance industry, you might already be thinking about you know, what kinds of documents could I use hot docs for. Uh, as you can imagine, hot docs can be used with any documents uh, that you do repetitive creation with. Uh, so they're standardized documents. Uh, there might be changes in those documents based on certain information, and that's great because HotDocs allows for that type of logic. Uh, and, and so anything that you're creating over and over again uh, it, you, is potentially a document that you could create in HotDocs uh, to be more efficient in your document creation process. So today we're going to talk specifically about claims litigation, uh, documentation, uh, and or claims processing or, or working through casework uh, with specific cases. Uh, and so claims processing, litigation, documentation, those are all things uh, very prime for hot docs. Uh, but also quote generation or policy documentation. Uh, we have some insurance companies completely driving their uh, policy documentation through hot docs or even assessor feedback or other documentation you might do within your business. So we want to look at a specific case study today. Uh, this is a top five U.S. Uh, insurance provider, uh, and they uh, are you know, auto, property, and casual, uh, casualty insurer. And the problem that they were facing with their business is that they did have some document assembly solution, but it was a custom-built <clears throat> solution built on Visual Basic. Uh, it had been around for quite a long time, and it did serve some very specific needs for the business. So it was helping them be more efficient, uh, and, and be compliant, but it was very difficult to maintain. Uh, so they had Visual Basic code, they had some challenges in maintaining it. It was not standardized across the different offices, so that made it a little more challenging. Uh, and there were small regional offices throughout the U.S., so trying to push that standardization uh, was challenging and updates to the system uh, was quite challenging as well. So they were better than many companies that don't have a system at all, but the system that they had was cumbersome and difficult to deal with. Uh, and didn't handle conditional logic quite as well, so that meant that there was a lot of additional forms uh, that could be simplified with a better solution. So the solution was to implement hot docs. Uh, so they took hot docs and were able to take all of this content that they'd built out in this other solution and convert them into hot docs templates. In many cases where they might have had 10 or 50 different templates, those could become a single template often in hot docs using the conditional logic that hot docs allows. Uh, to change the content based on specific criteria that the user might input. And so they created hundreds of automated intelligent hot docs templates, including you know, plaintiff and opposing counsel claims, litigation documents, legal letters, other types of documents that might go out uh, to a client or to an attorney uh, as a part of the, the, the litigation process. They were also able to integrate their hot, doc, uh, hot docs with their case management software. So attorneys at all of these offices were already entering all of the pertinent case information, who the opposing counsel was, who the plaintiff and the defendant are, uh, and, and other information into the case management software. So they wanted to make sure that uh, in creating documents, they weren't having to rekey that information. Uh, that leaves room for errors and, and also is just a very inefficient way to work. So uh, we were able to help them implement an integration with that case management software so that they could select a case and the data come in and they were able to deploy these templates to each of the regional offices across the nation. So I want to talk a little bit about how that was set up. So first about centralized development. Uh, because they were integrating with their case management system, they needed to have a way that was a common integration for each of the regional offices that needed to create templates. So what we were able to help them with was they were able to take the case management data and create a data mapping process that correlated case management fields 
two fields and a master hotbox template that we would provide or that they create in their central office. And then that master component list would contain all of the components that each of the regional offices could then use in their templates. So this deploy data integration meant that that master component file could go to each region and each region could create their own hotbox templates that they needed for their specific region. But by using those master components, it ensured that the data from the case management system would come into their hot docs uh, output. So what this meant is that the end user experience became very easy for the end user. Uh, so all they needed to do was go through, select the, the form or the documents that they wanted to work on, the specific template, select a case, and then behind the scenes that case data would be pulled and pre-filled in that interview process. The user would complete the additional questions and get their output documents. So it made it very efficient, made sure that they were compliant with those documents and that they were getting the data that they needed. So let's take a quick look at a demonstration of how that might work. So I'm going to demonstrate with an example application here with some case management integration, uh, similar to how uh, if any insurance company really could, could link hot docs uh, to some data and go through a document assembly process. So what I'm seeing here in this template portal application is a list of templates that are available to me. So this application allows for uh, document templates to be uploaded into the system and secured by user groups. So if a user is a part of a specific user group, they would see only the templates that apply to them. So if I worked in, say, the Georgia region, uh, I would see only Georgia templates. And if I worked in California, I would see only California templates. And so that allows for segregation of the content and make it very easy for the user to see only the things that they need to see. So I see a list of templates and I can select from one of those templates. And I'm going to do a package here that will allow me to go through and generate multiple output from a single questionnaire. So I'm going to choose deposition package. Now a standard hot docs process might allow the user to select an existing answer file and save that answer file. In this case, it's integrated with case data and the answer file is not being selected because the majority of the data comes from the case. There's only a few additional things that the user will enter and get their output. So what this is doing is actually integrating directly to the case management database. Uh, it lets them see sites that are available to this user. So my user is able to choose from these different sites. And then I can choose from the site. I can enter some information and search for a specific file name or number. I'm working with just some sample data, so there's not too much here. I'll just do a, an empty search here. And you can see I get cases directly out of the case management system with a file number and a file name that I can select from. So we'll go ahead and choose uh, Davis Thompson here, in this case. And then that takes me directly into the Hot Docs interview. But you can see coming into this interview, it is pre-filled with information. So case, the case management system's data comes into the interview automatically. I've got my case information, I've got my plaintiff information, and I've got my defendant information and even the attorney for uh, the plaintiff. So I can go through and I can see all the data there. And I just need to go through and answer any of the additional questions that need data. So let me pause for a moment and talk a little bit about the Hot Docs interview process. Uh, if you have not seen this before, it's important to understand uh, this for the end user. It, it's very straightforward, as you can see. The interview process is driven completely by that template that gets created by the template author the user comes in and they see an outline of the pages of questions they need to complete and they can go through and answer each of the questions uh, and they'll see different question types uh, so they can just tab through or click in the fields and, and answer questions in fact if we go to deposition information this is unanswered this is information not in the case management system so I can make some selections here we'll say yeah this is a video deposition and we'll say that Jane Doe is being deposed and the prep meeting we'll say is tomorrow so we'll say it's Friday uh, September 16th and we'll say the actual event is at 10 a.m. on Monday so that's 9 19 2016 in the ACME office so you can see how easy it is for the user to just tab through and answer the questions there are different field types and on this page of questions here we see quite a few of those we see a date variable here, text fields here for just freeform text input, uh, yes or no question can also be displayed as just a checkbox, and a multiple choice question, so a drop-down list 
Also, you can have number input for numeric uh, values only. So the user just goes through and answers the questions. At any time, they can also go to a toolbar up here and see an answer summary, get some help on the interview, and they can navigate through with this navigation toolbar down below. So from an end user perspective, I'm just going to go through and answer all the questions. And you can see I've got a little progress bar that will go all the way to green when I've answered all of the, the questions in the interview. I want to point out a nice thing here. You can see some questions might be optional. So like the office survey code, maybe the document doesn't need that and I want it to be optional. You can see it doesn't have an answer value, but it still shows me I've answered everything. That's because the the author in the template has said that that question is optional. The user doesn't have to provide that value to get a good document. So I just go through and answer all the questions. When I'm done as an end user, I'm just going to click Finish. And then that processes my answers, uses my template to generate my output documents. And here I get an output a client letter and a position notice. Uh, and I can download a zip of both of those or just download each of them individually. So we'll go ahead and download the depo deposition notice and open that up in Word. So it's a standard Word document, opens up in Word. Maximize that here. And here you can see a video deposition notice uh, between Davis Thompson and Jennifer Erickson with all the information I input. Uh, comes out nicely into my output document. And from here I can save it, print it, uh, whatever I need to do. So the standard output from Hot Docs can be either Word or PDF. So from this Word document, I could also get a PDF file. And it's easily modified. If it's a Word version, I can just make any modifications I need to there, or I can just save it into my document management system. And a single interview process could generate two or more documents, like you see here, or a single document. So you can see there, very easy workflow. If I wanted to go through and do another document, you know, if I wanted to do just a client letter for a different case, I could come through and now we'll choose Heather Rigmer and you can see that case management data comes right in for this particular case and there's my defendant and my case information and all I've got to do is go through and uh, fill out the deposition information and generate my document. So you can see how quick and easy it is and the user is not rekeying case data that already exists in the case management system. All right, so let's go back here. So the results of this in this uh, particular client, what they were able to do is they had now got uh, 1,500 legal staff using Hot Docs templates across their business. Uh, each of their legal districts, uh, their, their regional legal districts within their business in the United States is using Hot Docs. Uh, they've got more than 20,000 claims documents uh, getting produced every month and saving thousands of work hours every month. Uh, and what this did is it allowed the centralized office uh, to help manage that integration into their case management system, but then each of the regional offices that might have different template content or different standards for that particular uh, location can manage their own template content uh, to be able to make sure that they, they build the documents that they need for their business. And so it made it very easy to maintain for them and also obviously mitigates a ton of errors and, and risks that they have. So they've got this very good system that's saving them a lot of time and money, helping them be efficient, helping them generate uh, quality uh, documents. So in summary, Hot Docs within your, uh, within your insurance business, uh, specifically related to litigation around uh, cases, can, can definitely simplify your data entry uh, with integration into your case management system to pull existing data out of your system of record. It can help you lim uh, mitigate risk uh, by making sure that you're generating proper documents that are used the same way across the business. Uh, no more you know, copy and paste of an existing document or existing content and forget to make some change uh, that can really lead to either additional litigation or additional challenges and costs. Uh, and then of course, uh, a very efficient process. Uh, you can see there the user can go through a, a few simple clicks a few fields filled out and multiple documents generated. So very fast, uh, it helps improve process and costs, uh, save, save money. Uh, and then the standardization can be built across those templates. So all of those concerns about your document assembly process uh, can be answered uh, by implementing hot docs within your business. 
And that's it. We have a brief webinar today, so I will stop now and uh, pause for questions. And Marvin, what questions came through that I can uh, help answer? All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, let me pull up the uh, questions here. It takes me just one second. Okay, so first question. Um, so aside from litigation-related documents, uh, what other areas in insurance um, would be able to benefit from document assembly? Uh, so, we, so we touched on that a little bit earlier in the, uh, in the webinar. But uh, litigation documents are obviously a great one, but it could be assessor feedback forms, uh, could be any uh, court documents that you might get from directly from the client. Policy documentation. So we have uh, insurance companies that are running all of their policy documentation through Hot Docs. Uh, so they have a policy management system. The data comes from that policy management system and generates uh, both illustrations prior to you know, illustrations and applications during that process as well as the final policy documentation uh, for their clients. Uh, so policy documentation is a great one because there might be variants based on what product they select and things like that, uh, but it's typically very consistent documentation uh, that can be generated. Um, and then any other, other type of repetitive documents could also be targets, but uh, litigation and, and uh, policy documentation and claims uh, documents are are obviously the ideal within the insurance industry. Okay. Uh, the next question is, um, uh, how difficult is it to integrate with other systems like uh, case management or document management? And then what types of systems can it integrate with? Great question. So how difficult is it? This is something that uh, gets done every day. So we have businesses that integrate with uh, systems to pool data all of the time. So we have an excellent uh, methodology for going in and being able to connect to just about any system. There are some off-the-shelf integrations, but there are some that require a little bit of tweaking. Uh, but with the, the right framework, uh, what that allows you to do is integrate with any system that has a back-end database that can be connected to or a, a good API that will allow the data to be accessible. Uh, so let me give an example. We, we've integrated with systems like uh, Team Connect, uh, Passport, Legal Files, uh, Bridgeway Secretariat. Uh, we've integrated with um, much smaller or bigger systems, both pulling data out of SQL or Oracle databases, as well as pulling data out of REST APIs or other web services APIs, and pulling that into the Hotdocs answer set. And we're doing things all the time to try to uh, further improve the data integration process so that it uh, is just more agile and, and easy to implement. Uh, but you can see there we've done it at, a, at many, many companies to make it very easy for the end user where they're just selecting the data of record or the system of records, uh, specific record that they need, whether it's a case or a, a client or something like that, and the data comes right into that hot docs interview process. Very important to do. Uh, to really uh, get the biggest gain on efficiency and eliminate risk of retyping things and doing it wrong. All right, um, next question. Uh, we currently use Word macros. How long would it take to transition to a document automation system? That, that's a great question. The answer is fairly subjective or difficult to give. Uh, it, your transfer could be very, very quick. Uh, depending on what the documents look like. Implementing templates in Hot Docs uh, is a very straightforward process. You work in Word with the Hot Docs tool set to create the fields and the logic within the templates. The time it would take obviously would vary significantly based on the amount of content and the, uh, the complexity of the content. Uh, for example, if I had two forms but both forms were 150 pages and had hundreds of data points and logic in it, uh, that might take me just as long as a hundred documents that only have, uh, you know, one page each. Uh, so the the number of pages and the amount of complexity kind of be the driving uh, force behind knowing how long it would take you. Uh, I run a, our professional services team in the United States, and we're more than happy to be able to review some content and give you an idea on uh, what level of effort it would take to be able to implement those documents as as templates and hot dogs. 
Okay, good. Um, final question here is, <clears throat> um, do we have both uh, web-based and desktop-based solutions? Absolutely. So today, we dim what I demonstrated was an on-premise browser-based solution called Hotdoc Server. Uh, we also have a, have a cloud offering, so we do host uh, for businesses as well. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Insurance with uh, you know care around personal information, uh, PII, and and the uh, regulations around that. Not often in the cloud. More often using uh, an on-premise client-server model, which we demonstrate today. We do also have a local desktop model. So a local desktop model would be great for a very small implementation or smaller implementation because it requires that you install software on each user's machine. Uh, thin client experience like we showed today, great for a large deployment across a large business or a medium-sized business with an, a large number of users or a larger number of users. Uh, so we, we offer all of your major environments today that you work in, desktop, internal, client server model, or hosted solution. Okay, thank you, Mark. That was the last question that came through. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for taking time to attend this webinar today. Uh, we've recorded it, and we'll be putting it on our website uh, here shortly. So if there are other people in your organization that uh, were unable to attend today that you'd like to share this with, uh, they can uh, check it out on our, our website. So thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone.